Prophet ﷺ that the shayateen are what? Chained. Chained in the month of Ramadan. What does it mean? Does it mean that they're literally chained up? Or is it metaphorical? What does it mean? How many of you people have read the story in the Seerah of the Prophet? You know when they made the Treaty of Hudaybiyah? And part of the treaty was, if any of the Muslim men go to Medina, what would have to happen? They're not going to return it. They have to return them back yeah. to Mecca. So if anybody runs from Mecca, a Muslim man, he runs from Mecca to Medina to go to the Prophet and to be with Islam and Muslims, Muslims have to return that man. So this happened. That a group of Muslims ran away from Mecca and stayed in this place and they finally made it to Medina and then the Quraysh asked the Prophet that you, we have a contract, return them back. So the Prophet said it's part of the contract and this is, if it's the contract you have to keep the contract. So how did they take them back? They put chains on them. In the olden days what they would do is they would put a chain on your foot and that there would be a rock that they have to pull along with them, and that would be your chain. Okay? So now this Qur'ayshi, who has a sword and everything, and this guy doesn't have a sword and can't run away. Why? Because he has a rock on him that he's tied to. When Shaytan said to Allah, unzurni ila yomi yubarathun, give me time till when? Till the day of judgment. You have time till the day of judgment. Allah doesn't gather all the shayateen and lock them up and then release them after Ramadan. This is not what happens. But what happens is when the shayateen, they go up in the sky, you know how they throw the comments on them? Something, some invisible force hits them. It's called, it, it, Quran uses different terms for them. Some invisible force hits the shayateen when they go to the sky. When Ramadan comes in, the atmosphere of Ramadan, because of the malaika and other things, is such that it becomes different. They're chained. They're not locked up in the, or chained in the sense that they are unable to act. But rather, they're chained in a sense that it is ten times harder for them to act. So you're dealing more with your nafs and less with shaitan, but shaitan is still, still there because Allah promised shaitan that he will allow shaitan to act till the day of, day of judgment. Now the miracle of Qur'an that I want to share with you, because this is probably the last, or one of the last hanafas I guess. Surah Nas is the last surah of the Qur'an. But in fact, Qur'an does not end in Nas. So then, what comes after Surah Nas? Surah Fatiha. Because it's never ending. Right? And so, what are you supposed to say before you read Quran? A'udhu Billahi Shaitanir Rajeem. Surah Nas is the tafsir of A'udhu Billahi Shaitanir Rajeem. So, the last surah. But it is, in fact, when you are reading the whole Qur'an over and over again, it is actually the, a, the beginning of the beginning. Because you're asking Allah to protect you from the waswasa of shaitan. So this is as far as the beginning is concerned. But what about as far as the end is concerned? Because it's the beginning of the beginning, and it is also the end. So, so the nas... What is, it, what is its literary, you can say, specialty in being the last surah of the Qur'an? Because now you've heard the message of Qur'an, you understand the message, you've heard the whole Qur'an, and now the biggest fear of a mu'min is, okay, I understand the message, I like the message, I believe the message, I want to follow the message, but what? Shul Al Imran mentioned this. Rabbana la tuzi'a qulubana ba'da in Allah, don't lead our hearts astray. Don't let us get us deceived. Don't let us be blind after we've seen the, the guidance. So the last surah is that you're ending with what? 
you're ending with Allah, okay, I got the message, but now I agree with the message, but now protect me from shaitan lest I go astray. So Surah so Nas is a perfect surah to be the last surah of the Quran because it is the A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan al Rajim before the Bismillah al Rahman al Rahim. And it is the last surah that shows you how much fear a mu'min should have when he has guidance. Ul a'udhu bi rabbin nas, malikin nas, ilahin nas. Because how many people get guidance and then they go astray? How many people get guidance and then they go astray? So it's like rabbin nas, malikin nas, ilahin nas, ilahi. After giving me guidance, giving me this gold, don't let it, you know how many, how many times we decide to do something good and we just can't hold on to it. Right? Or we decide to change our life for the good. We just can't hold on to it. Right? In Ramadan, people make uh, kind of like, you know, every year, in the beginning of the year, you make what? What is it resolutions. called? Resolutions. Resolutions. You make Ramadan resolutions. You say, after Ramadan, I'll do this, and I'll do this, and I'll do this. And then, Rabbana la tuzi'a Allah, you gave me guidance. Now help me to hold on to this. As khudil kitaba bi huwa. Help me to hold on to the book with full strength. So, whatever guidance we got in this Ramadan, we ask Allah to Rabbana la tuzi'a qulubana ba'da id hadaytana Rabban nas, malikin nas, ilahin nas min sharr al-waswas al-khannas alladhi yuwaswasu fi sudur al-nas min al-jinnati wal-nas How does this tie in with the earlier topic? The month in which you're supposed to read Qur'an, the last surah is to protect you from Meaning he's still out there. He's still out there. He's still Khannas. He'll still come to you. And then Khannas means the one who comes to you and leaves. And he comes to you and then leaves. This is Shaytan. He comes to you and then leaves. He does guerrilla warfare. You know guerrilla warfare? He does. He attacks you, then leaves. Attacks you, and then leaves. So even though his movements are slow, also I want to share with you something from another perspective. If all the jinns were locked up in the real sense of the word, then all the jinns would know that Islam is the truth. Wouldn't the jinn world then see, oh, every Ramadan all the shayateen are gone, and then they come back? So that doesn't happen. What happens is they're chained. Chained means like the companion of the Prophet that was chained to a rock. It was difficult for him to move. And so your shaytan is still with you. He's still attacking you. And, but you have an advantage over him like never before. So then you're able to do all the good deeds that you do in Ramadan. أَقُولَ قَوْلِ هَذَا أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَاعِرُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَلِمُسْلِمِينَ Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. جزاكم الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله